going back here to, 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 to what we have to do today, uh, the first uh, paper that we had there was uh, Malone, 2008. Again, this uh, paper was a paper, uh, an opinion paper, that was part of a, a larger project that was this book on uh, collective intelligence creating a prosperous world at peace. Notice in 2005, uh, they were thinking that uh, that was where we, where we were going. Uh, it seems that now they would be probably more um, concerned about making sure that we use our collective intelligence. Remember, collective intelligence and collective stupidity are the two, 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 two sides of the same, of the two sides of the coin, right? And uh, so maybe now they would be more concerned about figuring out how we prevent collective stupidity from taking us to a world of war all the time. But anyway, uh, Thomas Malone in this opinion paper that is right at the beginning of the, the book uh, is very um, concerned about, or his, his main focus there is to provide us with a, um, a research agenda for collective intelligence, which I still think, you know, some 20 years later, I still think that is very uh, uh, relevant. We, we can still think of uh, ways in which we can uh, build the understanding of collective intelligence uh, by writing case studies or doing case studies in, in companies that are developing collective intelligence in a way that we be, believe that can be helpful to others, for example. Uh, searching for new examples of uh, collective intelligence. Uh, well, they, at this stage in 2006, when this paper was, uh, was uh, sent to, to, to the book, right? Uh, which, which ended up being published in 2008, um, Malone and his colleagues were already starting to try and build their genome of the collective intelligence that will appear in the other paper that we'll discuss today. Uh, and uh, they realized uh, that uh, possibly the, the best way of figuring out what was important to make sure that collective intelligence developed uh, or, or flourished in, in environments would be checking uh, um, organizations or checking situations in which collective intelligence had happened in the past and figuring out what were the conditions that led to it, right? So uh, uh, he claims here that we should also be looking for new examples of collective intelligence to see how they resemble each other, how, 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 they, how similar they are to one another, and uh, when there are differences, uh, what kinds of differences those are, right? Um, he also claims that we should uh, try and develop systematic experiments uh, systematic in the sense that they can be repeated by others, or at least others who, who read about our experiments uh, can agree with our procedures and then agree with our results, or challenge or, or doubt our procedures and then challenge our results. Uh, and also uh, theory development. Uh, so those were the, the four main uh, topics to be included in a uh, research agenda for, for, for collective intelligence. Case studies, new examples, systematic experiments, and theory uh, developments. Uh, one interesting thing uh, he mentions right at the beginning of his uh, paper is that beehives and ant colonies are examples of groups of insects doing things like finding food uh, sources that seem intelligent. Uh, so the, the, he claims that the way that they, 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 they proceed seems intelligent. And, and by the way, uh, his, uh, and then he's going to say, but we are we, we're only interested, or in this book, we'll be interested in studying uh, the the intelligence of humans, right? But one interesting thing is that uh, Malone's definition for collective intelligence, and notice how broad this is, is, he claims that collective intelligence is a group of individuals doing things collectively that seem intelligent. Seem intelligent, doesn't even, you know, because judging what is intelligent may, it's hard. For example, is it intelligent to build a pyramid? Right, uh, depends on the perspective, right? But, it, uh, but do uh, an, an alien, you know, pointing his or her telescope to, to, to Earth and looking at those thousands of people carrying stone and, and piling them up to build that kind of a structure, would, that, would this alien believe that there was some intelligence behind it? And uh, surely, yes, right? Because it's, it's intelligence may also mean this coordination of different individuals to perform a task. Uh, so when, uh, when Malone claims that that collective intelligence is a group of individuals doing things collectively that seem intelligent, I think what he's emphasizing here is the fact that we see uh, coordination, uh, sometimes we see cooperation, uh, we see, uh, we see, we see uh, a purpose behind what's being developed, 
and we know and, and, and we, we notice that it's 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 called uh, it's the collective that will lead to that specific result right? I have to say that I don't like this uh, definition much people usually uh, laugh about it and say you know I, this is being intelligent uh, being collective intelligence is doing something that seems intelligent right but if we go a little beyond and think well if it seems intelligent we think of someone observing and noticing that there is some purpose behind that and a purpose that depends on either on the collective of a collective effort or on a collective decision and that is what makes uh, it collective intelligence right so he would need a lot more words to try to explain the same thing so in that sense i don't like it but i like it right i don't like the fact that it seems uh, such a uh, almost like a joke uh, definition but at the same time uh, it provides us with that understanding that we are not there to judge if it's smart or not if it's being made it's because it seems to be smart to someone who's able to influence a lot of others and there's collective intelligence there because this all these others who are influenced they are working in a in a way that and, and producing something that would be impossible to to, to to do alone or would at least be very hard uh, uh, or it is a, 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 it is even thought uh, collectively if it's an emergent collective intelligence right? um, so the uh, he, he uses this uh, this opinion paper uh, to also provide us with the purpose of the Center for Collective Intelligence that he had started there at the MIT. And he says, the key question we're using to organize our work is, and notice, a question that is used to organize our work already means what drives our collective intelligence to study collective intelligence. Okay? Uh, uh, this question is, how can people and computers be connected so that collectively they act more intelligently than any individual group or computer has ever done before? So notice here that for Malone, collective intelligence is not only a human venture. He says, it's humans getting together with the support of computers. And, and, and this explains why collective intelligence is a term that didn't appear in Britannica 50 years ago. Right? When Britannica was, let's say, the, one of those encyclopedias that people refer to. Because although collective intelligence has always existed uh, among humans, it was not uh, uh, leveraged to the level that it's possible nowadays with computers. Of course, there was the collective intelligence that, that led to the, the pyramids being built, showed that collective intelligence was already there, and that there are, there are other systems, that there are other system, uh, ways of systematically include people to work in a collaborative or cooperative uh, way. Right? Uh, is by the way, using my definition of collaboration and cooperation, is the construction of the pyramids an effort of collaboration or cooperation? Think collaboration when everyone has the same purpose. Cooperation when we have different purposes, but we, we, we can work aligned. Cooperation. Collaboration, we have only single objective. Do you think that everyone was happy to build the place where the pharaoh would be buried one day? They were all enthusiastic. I want to carry heavy stone on my back so that the king has uh, his own uh, deathbed in a very pharaonic way. Not that they have the same objective, but they couldn't diverge of that objective. So if they, if they can't diverge from someone else's intent, I would say that that, that is coordination, Use in my, uh, using my, my definition here. Because you know, they don't have the same objective. The, the, the objective of the king is having the pyramid built. The objective of the slave is keeping alive. Right? If he diverts from the king's uh, intent, he's killed. So there is an alignment in, in, in the effort, not because the, the final objective is the same, simply because... You know, the, the, other, other factors that, that allow for at least for some time we, will, we have this, we have the same intent. If the king is is happy, that means that I keep alive. I prefer to to be alive, even if that means carrying a lot of stones on my back. Then deciding to that that project doesn't interest me and being killed. Right. Um, so uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, that Malone considers that considers that collective intelligence is an effort that involves humans and computers. Uh, based on this definition. The pyramids would not be collective intelligence, right? Of course, if, if we asked him, I, I'm, I'm sure he would say, "Well, it's yeah, they have they had different ways of computing things in the past, and in fact, they had they had soldiers that each one of them would be uh, uh, 
in charge of, let's say, 100 workers there and would make sure that we, they would all be walk, walking in line, carrying stones and everything. So that was a system. And that was probably also a computational system in, in the sense that it organized things. But our electronic computational systems of, uh, of today give us so much power uh, to coordinate, to, to, to collaborate, uh, that, uh, that Malone, coming from the MIT, that is a technological center, sees, well, there's huge potential for uses of our machinery, our technology, our social networks, our, you know, our electronic social networks, let's say, to build collective intelligence. Right? Uh, but it's, it's a, a, a perspective of looking at collective intelligence that may not necessarily be shared by, by everyone. It is the, the, the perspective of collect collective intelligence of our days, because, of course, we have all those technological tools that help us uh, uh, achieve uh, this purpose. Okay? Um, and I think those are, were the main aspects that I found here on, on Malone's, uh, on this Malone's short paper. Uh, I don't know if you have any other ideas that, uh, that you read there that you would like to, to share. We'll, 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 we'll be able to do that uh, on, on our forum afterwards. But, uh, but if you have anything else that called your attention there. Uh, uh, most of the paper was directed to kind of set guidelines to develop knowledge about uh, what intelligence. Yeah. Uh, Again, think that this, this book was written in, in, it was published in 2008, but you see even, there's the dates where, for example, Malone wrote this, it's printed there, October 13, 2006, right? Uh, so it was 2005, 2006, that was a time where uh, some of these guys were, there the, the was Malone in the MIT, well, the French guys, they were thinking more philosophically, but they were also thinking of collective intelligence, and uh, we had some other people in, in different parts. They were trying to organize this field so that we could all work together. They, they wanted collective intelligence to, to they wanted to collaborate and also maybe also cooperate if others didn't have exactly the same uh, alignment of ideas, but for a while can we work together? So maybe if, you could, if they could bring some people from uh, that studied bees to tell, to tell us how it was there and, and try to in, help us increase our understandings of, of the possibilities of coordinating, so they, maybe, maybe that would be coordination in the middle of the way, uh, even if at the end uh, the biologists would be more interested in simply understanding how the bees uh, live, and, 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 and maybe those guys here in, in business. Well, Malone, for example, is, is in a business school. Uh, those guys could, could be thinking of how can we end up bringing these organizations to make organizations more efficient or more effective or whatever. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, you're right. Then we have uh, the paper by uh, Attlee, uh, Tom Attlee. It's this one here, um, who was also, well, uh, one of the introduction papers to this book. And one thing that this paper made me think of, again, it's an opinion paper, uh, but it, it made me sort of organize in my mind for the first time, and of course, I, I, I don't know exactly when I read this for the first time, but uh, I started realizing this thing that the collective intelligence may be emergent or may be uh, top-down. It may, it may be something that the, the, the crowds uh, aspire, so it's, it's the crowds deciding on doing something and then organizing to do it, or it may be some, uh, sophisticated mind thinking of a specific objective that is interesting to that person uh, and creating a way of getting the whole world to work for his or her own intents. Right? Um, so uh, one way of categorizing collective intelligence is thinking of who's involved in the decision making and who's involved in the actual performance of the, the efforts that are needed. So who's, who's deciding and who's acting? Right? Um, well, we do have, and in fact, uh, notice that uh, Tom Attlee talks about uh, co-intelligence. Uh, co-intelligence was actually the term that Tom Attlee coined at first. And he claims that co-intelligence uh, is, uh, he, he says that I coined the term co-intelligence to cover all ways to evoke the wisdom of the whole, so, so of the, the population, of the crowds, on behalf of the whole. So co-intelligence, is co-intelligence collective intelligence? Yes, it is. But it is only part of our, right, uh, of the whole. Because, for example, when you, you think that co-intelligence is the wisdom of the whole on behalf of the whole, you would say crowdsourcing is not co-intelligence. Because it's not the whole for the whole. It's the whole for an individual, for, right? Uh, uh, Wikipedia, for example, we could say that is the whole for the whole. Google, I'm not talking about, about Google search, uh, it is the whole 
or one, right? We're all helping Google make a better understanding of the world so that Google can profit out of it. We don't profit. Well, of course, we, we, uh, Google shares with us some of the value because it says, well, now that you help me understand uh, the, the world and build a great oracle, which is Google Search, uh, I, I will give you some of the, the, I'll give you back some of the value. You will search things here and uh, I will provide you with uh, some of the knowledge that I generated. But as you search and I provide you with some of the, the, the knowledge that I generated, so I share some of the knowledge with you, I also accumulate much more knowledge because your search has a lot of value for my own business proposition because then I will sell your search to, to vendors that, that, that are interested to, to sell you products, for example. Okay? So can you understand this difference between Wikipedia as well, we all find that it's interesting to have, or at least a large group finds that it's interesting to have an encyclopedia that is built by the people so that each one puts a little effort, and, uh, but we, we still have an encyclopedia that is as valuable or more valuable than an encyclopedia from the past. I remember that when I was a kid, I was probably 12 or so, my father came home one, one day and he brought uh, uh, an encyclopedia, it was Mirador, right? It was one of the encyclopedias that we had here in Brazil. I don't know exactly if, well, it's definitely either an international, it was not something Brazilian. Uh, I, it, it probably published one of these uh, international encyclopedias, but I remember the name was in Portuguese was Mirador. And it had, I don't know, some 50 volumes, so he had to make a, a double investment. He had to ask someone to build up uh, some additional shelves, and then he put it there. And I remember him telling us, we were five kids at home, and he said, look, this was a huge investment. Right? We don't have a car, but we have an encyclopedia. Right? I could have bought a car, but I bought an encyclopedia. That was the cost of a, he had to say, it's the cost of a Volkswagen, a, a, a Beetle of the time. So I would say that maybe he was probably thinking of an, an old Beetle, but maybe an encyclopedia like that could have costed, maybe, I don't know, some today, some in, in dollars, I would say some $3,000, right, $5,000. It was a lot of money, uh, but at that stage, he thought, well, this is the knowledge that you need to go through high school. I have five kids at home. It's a good investment. Please make good use of it because uh, the fact that it's sitting there on the wall, on, on the wall will not pay uh, a payback, right? So the payback here will have, you have to use it. Uh, now, so many years later, we can think we don't have to spend a car, uh, the, the money that we would spend a car on a car to, to, to have an encyclopedia. We can build it together. So in this case, uh, this, this is definitely an example of... Uh, co-intelligence using uh, Tom Atlee's uh, terms. Unfortunately, I don't see this term being used. It would be good if uh, we kept using, for example, creating these differences in categorization and saying, well, so it's, if it's the whole, to the whole, we'll call that co-intelligence. Uh, if it's the whole uh, working for for individual, uh, so if, if the decision-making process happens in, the, in a centralized fashion, and then the, the action, the, the the effort is done by, uh, by, by the crowds, then uh, well, an example of that would be crowdsourcing, but we could have an, uh, a name for, for this situation in which uh, the decision is centralized, but the, the effort is carried out by, by, by crowds. Uh, then we, we, we have a situation uh, which is uh, the opposite to, to, let's say, to crowdsourcing, that is where the group takes a decision and an individual performs it. Can you give me an example of that kind of collective intelligence where we as a group decide and then an individual will have to, to perform? In the army. In the, well, in the army the general decides we're going to war and then he sends the soldiers. Marco, uh, I, I think that uh, in, in the army, it's all it's it's very centralized decision. One decides and many obey and don't question. Yeah. It's it's up down, yeah, and it's up down, and it has to be up down because uh, I mean, if you want people to, to, to fight a war, you have to send them and they they can't they, they shouldn't question. They, sh they should go. Yeah. Uh, should an uh, example be like uh, uh, representatives? Yeah, the mayor, the mayor of a city, for example. We all choose the mayor. Uh, and after we, we, we elected this guy, he or she is elected to perform what we expect. Otherwise, we kick this person out after four years, right? So, uh, uh, or uh, the person in charge of, a, let's say, you live in an, in an apartment building, 
there are 50 apartments there. You elect a, I don't know, I don't know in English, a, a CGIC, a, a, it's, a, it's, it's the person who, who's in charge of making sure that uh, the, 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 the whole building is working, that the elevators work, that uh, the, the doors and gates uh, of, the, of the building uh, work properly. So that's a person who's chosen by a large group. The large group decides what the priorities are, what, what needs to be done, and then uh, that person, is this collective intelligence? Sure, it's, it's, a, it's collective in the decision making, and then it involves an individual to, to perform it. Uh, uh, well, and then uh, the only situation in which it's not collective intelligence it is when the decision is, decision is individual, and the, the action or the performance is also individual. That, that is typically individual intelligence, right? When, if you decide something for your own life and it depends on your own efforts and nobody else's, there's no collective intelligence there. But notice that we, we have already established at least three groups. Uh, the, the whole thinking or deciding and the whole executing, uh, Atle would call that co-intelligence. Again, I don't see many, many people use it. Maybe could anyone search uh, Google Scholar very quickly and check how many, just ch uh, uh, check Google Scholar for co-intelligence and see how many papers you see there. Uh, I, I may be wrong, uh, but I, I don't think that this term has, has been used as much as it, it could have, uh, mainly considering that Atle was writing about this. Uh, 1080. It's, li it's little, right? Yeah, well, a, a thousand and eighty, right? And now look for collective intelligence. So we'll see the, the order of magnitude of. And we're talking about Google Scholar here, okay? Wi Fi is a <laughs> No worries. That Wi Fi takes its time. Uh, uh, three million. <laughs> three million, right? So three million papers. Uh, three million citations on Google Scholar on collective intelligence, only a thousand on co-intelligence. So I'm saying, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Atley, uh, you had a great idea, but people didn't follow. So uh, you, didn't, you didn't perform a, a, a collective intelligence. Uh, uh, you did, did not generate collective intelligence. You could have thought alone and, and have everyone agree with you. And, but again, we may not be using his term. Maybe there is a different term that is being used. In fact, I don't see this. I, I, I'd like to see a lot more categorization of collective intelligence. I, I, I'd like to have a, a term for something that is thought by the crowds and performed by the crowds. Uh, and then I would like to have another term uh, that we could use to talk about something that is thought by the crowds and performed by an, an individual, like the, the mayor situation or the... Um, I think that not, now I was thinking about the Sinjiku in, in English. I, I just think that they call it, call it the manager, right? the manager of the building. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and, I, I, and you know, because making these differences would make it easier for us to discuss the topic. If I talk, if, if we were talking about co-intelligence, you would all know, oh, okay, this is all for all. This is that very, I don't know if it's very democratic, it's, uh, but it's, it, it's, everyone has the power of performing the work, but everyone also contributes to the, to, to the decision making, right? Uh, and in other cases, so all for all is definitely much less manipulative much less, uh, uh, you know, manipulable. No, 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 I'm talking about manipulation, you know. Uh, so when you have crowdsourcing, the, uh, my critique to crowdsourcing is that it may be an interesting way for a, an organization to have its own objectives achieved, but it may depend on exploitation of others. Uber, for example, is a crowdsourcing uh, way of uh, achieving um, something, right? The decision making happens there at Uber, uh, the, the, the company, so the benefits are all for Uber. The, what, what is uh, Maria Vitória saying? Uh, the syndic was, uh, I don't know, just, but anyway. Um, so, so, so uh, Uber is collective intelligence, but we, we have been using the term Uberization, for example, even in a, in a, as a way of, uh, of putting, uh, putting labor down or, or, or de-skilling de de, uh, de humans and uh, there's a lot of criticism about the uberization process that turns uh, individuals into less powerful and le less capable of deciding on their own. Uh, so I, I, and I, I don't think that it, it's necessarily like that. I think that there's a lot of this you know, centrally coordinated or, or, or centrally developed processes that depend on a lot of people that can even lead to a better stand for the individuals. And in fact, I had one of my students a, a few years ago, um, Fernanda, uh, she started doing her, her, her studies on collective intelligence about Uber. And she, when, she got to, when she started thinking of Uberization, she could only see all the criticism about it. 
you know, uh, we, of course we have, uh, um, uh, well, we, we have a lot of research that is done based on a, a Marxist perspective, for example, that thinks that labor and, and capital are always one against the other. Uh, and, and, and those researchers were claiming that Uberization was a process in which uh, humans were de-skilled, they, they lost their power even further, so labor was, was being put down and capital was put, being put up or whatever. Uh, I think that's, that could be one side of the story, but I was, uh, the experience I was having with, uh, with Uber drivers, and I'm talking about 2019, was in many cases, uh, talking to them, they, they were actually, many times they were people that had got unemployed, sometimes managers, directors of companies, uh, people, people that were important in the, the organizations, important in the sense that they were, let's say, up very, very, very high in their organizations in the past, and then suddenly they lost their jobs, and they started working for Uber, uh, and, uh, but, but they didn't think of Uber as, uh, as a, let's say, as, as making their, uh, as putting them down. In fact, they thought, well, you know, this provides me with the opportunity of getting some money while I'm looking for, uh, re re for repositioning in the markets, uh, and uh, while I'm, I'm, I'm working at Uber, I, I can at least, I, I have my, in my mind, I have the idea that I'm not unemployed. I do not have to accept or to take this, the first job offer that I receive. I can give myself time to, to, you know, to, to be interviewed by different companies and, and not in that situation that I have to accept any job. I can also say no. To some extent, I can also, let's say, interview back the companies and see if what they are proposing me uh, seems interesting to me. So I had this feeling that maybe what Uber was doing could be, in some cases, exactly the opposite of what the mainstream Marxist uh, uh, scientific community was saying, and that they were that Uber was actually empowering people. Of course, Fernandez started that research in 2019. Then we had the pandemic during 2020 and 2021, uh, and when she went interviewing um, drivers, the situation was uh, completely different. Uh, the people that were working as, as drivers then were not necessarily again were not managers, you know, working part time while they were trying to be uh, to reposition themselves. Uh, it was actually people that were there doing that for as, as their last uh, alternative of, of uh, survival, let's say. Uh, and and the conclusions she got were pretty similar to the conclusions of uh, some of the, the previous uh, research that we had seen. Right? Uh, I don't know if things have changed. And, and besides, I don't have the naive perspective that any decision that is taken by a monocratic entity, by, by an individual or by a small group of individuals, that it will take into consideration the interests of the, of, of the large group of uh, people that may be, um, uh, let's say, impacted by those decisions, right? So I, I do agree that there is a, not only a risk, but there is a chance of when you, when, when you start uberizing, uh, and I'm creating a new term here, uh, considering that uberization has already been created, uh, when we start uberizing our society, uh, th there are risks that we are de-skilling people. Uh, but with, if, if that is followed by uh, legislation that tries to prevent uh, de-skilling, it may provide us with uh, another alternative for people who, for example, if you want to study, if you want to, to take a, a doctoral degree or a master's degree, and you, but you still need some money to, to make sure that you have something to eat, you will say, well, for the next two years or so, I will work as a Uber, uh, an Uber driver for two or three hours a day, but uh, and then I can study the, the rest of the time, right? If I went and tried to, to get a job at, at a company, they would ask me to work 10 hours a day, uh, and, and I would have no choice, and I could not study. So which of the two situations is more de-skilling, the one that doesn't allow me to keep improving my intellectual possibilities, or, 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 or the one that is maybe providing with providing me with, uh, let's say, a, a job that is not so attractive, that doesn't, does not pay much, but that this pays me enough for me to survive while I'm, I'm, I'm achieving other, other uh, interests of mine. Um, okay, so I, I think that for me, the, the, the most interesting part of uh, this uh, paper by Atli is that it led me to think of this, uh, you know, who decides and who, who performs the, the actual efforts. Uh, and although, you know, he does not ca categorize this well uh, here, but this, the, the, the fact that it, it already coins this term co-intelligence as being the whole for the whole allows us to think that there is also the whole for, for an individual, uh, an individual for the whole, uh, an individual for an individual as other possibilities. This was, this was clever. Um, 
And then another part of uh, another interesting uh, thing of this paper is when it scales collective intelligence and says, you know, there is collective intelligence even within an individual. It, it claims that when your ego and your outer ego are there fighting one another and, and you are having to make decisions, when you are making a decision alone, you already have the different, the, the, the different yous, or I have the different me's there uh, fighting one another uh, until I, I, I get to that decision, right? So it's an interesting way of thinking of collective intelligence, but he claims that there is a, an individual collective intelligence, collective intelligence among uh, our own internal subjective parts and voices. And then he says that there is this uh, interpersonal or relational collective intelligence that happens in, you know, in, when, we, when we talk to someone else. Uh, there is a group collective intelligence when we are performing uh, in a group. And then he talks about activity, organizational network, neighborhood, community, city, county uh, or shire, state or province, regional, national, national, whole, whole society collective intelligence, national collective intelligence. I prefer to think of, when I think of national, I always think of, when I think of nations, uh, I always think of collective stupidity. I, I find it difficult to think of collective intelligence there. But, well, um, let's not be too harsh on, 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 on nationality. Um, but uh, when we think of national collective intelligence, it refers to things that we, for example, we all as Brazilians uh, aim together or think together our values as a country. If, if they if they exist, right? Uh, and then uh, he even refers to a global humanity collective intelligence. Uh, again, I don't think that he was very um, successful in coining these terms in a way that our the discussion that happened ha happened after 2008 followed these patterns. But it's uh, at least interesting for us to think that well, the first level of collective intelligence that, it, that exists is the one that exists within our own uh, brain, right? It's, us uh, waiting different perspectives, that waiting different ideas that we have in our minds, and uh, checking which one of them will survive or will impose itself to the other ideas that sometimes contradict it, uh, and, and before we express our own uh, understanding of, 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 or before we before we act or, or, or decide individually and, 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 and do that as part of a larger uh, movement. Um, so this was what I had to say about Atlee. I don't know if anyone had anything else that you wanted to, to discuss about that paper specifically. They're, they're two very simple papers. They're, they're introduction to, uh, introductory papers to the, to the book. Uh, both authors were they're more interested in trying to show us a path to go than, uh, than coin their, uh, or, or make sure that we follow their own ideas. Uh, so uh, I don't think that any of these papers is very polemic at all. Or, uh, and at the same time, they they're, they're interesting uh, for us because they, they bring some insights of new ways of thinking that we wouldn't without them. Uh, then what do we have? Next, Salminen. Uh, Salminen's paper, oh, this, is, this is from Atlas, this is from Malone, this is it. Salminen's paper is the one that I, I told you is more academic in the sense that it was, notice, uh, it, it needed to be so, it was published in the proceedings of this collective intelligence conference that happened in 2012. Right? This collective intelligence conference, uh, I believe, if I'm not wrong, is the one that MIT held for, for many years. I, th I think it still happens. So if any of you write uh, on the topic, you may submit to, to this conference that happened there at the MIT. And, uh, but of course, being a proceeding paper, uh, it needed to, to bring the results of research that was performed by, by the author. And what uh, Salmanin, Salmanin, Salmanin did here was um, a, 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 a literature review. He tried to check what others had written uh, about in, uh, collective intelligence in the past and uh, try to figure, figure, make sense of, of the whole of these uh, papers that had already been written. Right? Um, uh, I, I think I'll use this paper also to, to discuss a little methodology of writing an academic paper with you because this is something that you have to do, right? So notice that uh, an abstract always has to show or should show three things. The objective of the paper, the, the methodological procedures that were used to try and achieve that objective, and the results that were obtained. Right? So if you look at this abstract here, can you find there what the objective of the paper was? I 
I would say that the objective here was to review themes relevant to collective intelligence. I myself don't like very much a verb like review as, as, as uh, the verb to motivate the objective. Uh, although review may mean, well, it's something that was obscure and hopefully also obscure to the, to the author here. So when he's referring to review, it's, it's not only review to others, but review to himself. Because wh why, why I don't like uh, uh, review? Uh, if it's something that you already know and you want to only want to convince others about, it's not a, a scientific paper. But maybe review here has this also, uh, it's unveiled to others, but also to, to him. He, he, he also did not know what the themes were, were relevant and he wanted to figure that out. So it's an exploratory research project. Uh, what is the methodology that is used here? A keyword search, uh, yeah, performed on the web of knowledge, which is a database, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, so this was the methodology that was used to select the papers to be analyzed. And what were the results that were obtained? Three levels of uh, abstractions, uh, macro level, micro, macro, and emergence. So nobody, nobody knew beforehand what he would find on those papers, but after reading those, I think, 40-something papers, uh, that had been written uh, uh, about collective intelligence and, and that appeared in the knowledge, the web of knowledge uh, database, uh, he figured out that some, some of them were more focused on discussing collective intelligence from a more, uh, from a micro level perspective, and this micro level is from the level of the individual. Others were more uh, interested in discussing collective intelligence from a macro level, which is the, the, the level of the, the collective. And some of them were concerned about discussing what he calls here the emergence of uh, collective intelligence that, in fact, uh, represents uh, the, the, you know, the emergence is the bottom-up, uh, the, the crowd, like, let's say the crowds or the, the, or the collective, uh, whatever is generated at the individual level and bringing that to the collective level. I think that in general, this was the, 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 the findings, I, I, the paper is not Sometimes I find it, I don't know how you found it, it's, it's, it's the kind of paper that you have to read more than once to, to understand the details. Uh, uh, but, uh, but it makes sense that, uh, um, it makes sense that, that we, we have collective intelligence being studied at, at those three levels. And I find that okay, this is a good contribution. When we're talking about collective intelligence, what is the perspective that we are using? Uh, are we interested in the individuals in the collective intelligence? Are we, we interested in in the results of the, the collective, uh, are we inter interested in how the process evolves? For example, how the, if, if we're interested in the process of, of collective intelligence, we will we'll have to discuss a lot of motivation. And if we're only if, if we're interested in the results, that may not be our main focus. So, where is the focus of our research? And and, and this this is the kind of no, notice that uh, did this guy go to the field to do his research? Is this a field research? Well, if you think field research more like what geologists do, that they go and uh, dig, uh, dig a hole on the, the ground, or if you think of field research, what biologists do, they go to the, again, look for, for birds or insects or whatever in the fields, maybe you think that there is no field research here, but, well, he went to this database, collected information from there, and made sense of it, so that is actually field research, right? Uh, the field is, uh, is uh, electronic, it's virtual, in the sense that you, you do not have to, you do not, not, not have to get out of your uh, computer to, to do it, but you're actually doing field research in the sense that there is, a, uh, there is some practical data that is collected from, let's say, the field. And the field of exploration here was what was published in this uh, database so far. And so it's, that, that's actually very practical field research. Different to, again, to uh, having to move somewhere else because you can do that electronically. But you still, the, the data that you're collecting is practical data. The, the papers that had already been published become the object of the study. Right? He, he looks at those papers. So, right. So, uh, um, um, I think that the, 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 the paper has this um, um, virtue of uh, show, showing as an example of a, a field research that converted into, so, so that looked at the practice and what happened and converted that into some new knowledge. The new knowledge presented here is this categorization, categorization uh, of the three levels of, uh, of research. The micro level, in which 
we were trying to enable the factors related to, to, to the, the individual human beings, uh, the emergence, uh, emergence level that talks about the process, uh, how it happens, and the, the macro level that is the level of the cross. And then there's a stable one who shows how he, where he got uh, evidence of each of the, of the concepts that uh, he discusses in the paper, relating them to the papers that were the objective of study. I think, uh, uh, notice that even when we think of, of um, academic papers, we usually have in our conclusion session, uh, in addition to summarizing our main, the main ideas of, or the main findings, we also uh, provide some insights to, uh, about what could be uh, future research. So for example, uh, uh, here in the, the discussion of conclusions, I think one, two, three, the, I think the fourth paragraph, he says the proposed frameworks points out some directions for future research, and then he starts describing possibilities of future research that he and his group would uh, need, or that others could do in the future. And then he also talks about, uh, I think the one before the last paragraph, limitations of the study. As always, the study has its limitations. The initial sample of the literature was obtained from a single database with only two keyword searches. The scope was limited only to papers discussing collective intelligence uh, uh, discussing collective intelligence of humans. So I don't think that this is a limitation, uh, considering that the object of his study is collective intelligence of humans, so it's not a limitation to study only collective intelligence of humans, but what he's saying here is that he did not go into collective intelligence of ants, bees, or even machines. Okay? Uh, again, if, if I were the editor, uh, I would have, and, and I was, or, or if I was one of the reviewers, I would have claimed that this is not a limitation, for example, I would also have claimed that, for example, the objective that is presented there on the abstract to review the uh, themes relevant to collective intelligence is a little different to the, the objective that is presented at the end of the first page, where he says the objective is to review current liter literature, identify relevant themes, and form a conceptual framework for studying the phenomenon. So I think that we should all always try to keep uh, objectives consistent. So if the objective is to form a conceptual framework for studying the, the phenomenon, it's different to simply review themes relevant to collective intelligence. I, I would prefer to have exactly the same objective uh, mentioned in the abstract and in the paper afterwards. But in general, it's a fair and honest paper that provides us with uh, some insights and also some good references to study. Uh, gee, it's, it's almost uh, time for us to have our break, uh, but maybe I'll, I'll ask you for another 15 minutes or so so that we can uh, explore the, the collective intelligence genome uh, paper before we, we we, we stop for, for, for coffee. Uh, as I told you, this uh, paper, it's, it's not, not uh, and, and this is where, let me find it here. This is not an, let's say, typical academic paper because it was written for slow management review. The slow management review is MIT's equivalent to, to Harvard Business Review. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a journal or that is intent to reach to people that are not necessarily in academia and therefore are not so interested in the methods uh, that are used by the researchers to get to the results and more interested in how, how can we turn that into knowledge that we can use in our daily lives in, in, in practice, right, in organizations. So it's a much more practical uh, paper, uh, but still I think it's one of the most, this is definitely one of the most influential papers in, in collective intelligence of all times. Uh, you will see, again, uh, uh, considering that you have access to Google Scholars there, could you see how many citations this paper has? Just if you look for Tom uh, Malone, the collective intelligence genome, you will see that it probably has more citation, citations than, than, that, that paper, uh, than the term co-creation uh, had papers written about. In fact, this is a good way of us finding out the impact of a paper on researchers, how many others are the papers cite that paper? You have to look for the collective intelligence genome in Google Scholar. Seven hundred and seventy-six other papers cited this. So, well, okay. So, co uh, what was uh, co-intelligence? had more papers written about 
then, then we have citations on these people. But 700 citations is a lot of citations. I have to tell you that whenever I have a paper that I write that has more than 10 citations, uh, I find that uh, it's already an impactful, I, I cause an impact. Because being cited means not that you were only read by 10 people, but it means that 10 people that read your paper were also able to produce science with the, with the level of quality that was selected to be published somewhere. Right? So it's not that uh, you, you may think, well, 10 citations is too little. Well, it means that 10 other people who Ten other writers, academic writers, used your, your work, right? At least ten other uh, researchers doing their, their doctoral uh, thesis or their master degrees or whatever, they, they, they read and, and it's not only that they read, but they read and they thought that what you wrote was impactful enough to be uh, cited in their own work. So it's a lot of citations uh, that this paper uh, has. I, I expected more, in fact, but I, I, because I think that this, this, this paper here, uh, it has the building blocks of, um, of uh, collective intelligence uh, all men or mentioned here, right? Their idea was to, well, although it's not an academic paper in the sense that they're really concerned with their, with their methodology, to, 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 to really concerned in presenting their methodology to us, uh, they, uh, they explained here that they, 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 they went there checking for whatever company they, they thought that, had, that did anything related to collective intelligence, they included in a data set, and they start, then they started analyzing what were the things that these companies did in which ways they were different to traditional companies, and uh, in which ways they were similar or different to other companies that also performed things that related to collective intelligence. And basically, they, they figured out that they, they had to, to, to think of, uh, in order to think of the genes of collective intelligence, they had to think uh, of uh, a few questions. The first of them, what is being done? Is it a, a matter of creating something or deciding about something? Because we, ha we can have humans involved in creating, which means putting their muscles to work, or their brains, but to, to do the effort, let's say, or you can have humans involved in, in the decision-making process, uh, and of course, uh, if, in, if, if, if we're thinking about decision-making, there are several different ways of collectively deciding, and uh, if we're thinking about the creation, there are also several different ways uh, which are going to be explored in the paper. Uh, another issue is who, who is doing the, the whatever is, is, is being done? Is it something that is done by the crowds or by, well, the hierarchy. Uh, the hierarchy meaning someone thinking alone or someone in the organization deciding what others uh, will, will, have, will, will have to do, right? Uh, another question, why uh, are, are people doing that? What is the motivation for being engaged in a collective intelligence effort? And they claim here basically those three genes, money, love, or glory. This, I, I've, I've been telling you about money, love, and glory since the beginning of semester. This is the oversimplification, but it, it's an oversimplification without here saying that it's a bad thing, right? Uh, you will see many other authors, when they talk about motivation, describing several different reasons why people would get engaged uh, into collective intelligence. But I have found it challenging to find any, anything that I cannot include in one of these three more generic baskets. Right? Money would be either the traditional payment for service with, with cash, uh, but it could also be uh, any other situation in, in, in which someone receives a pragma pragmatic benefit, a direct benefit uh, from, from, from the participation in the, in, in the collective intelligence efforts. Um, glory would mean some sort of uh, uh, acknowledgement. Uh, and, and there's some fuzzy areas there, for example, between glory and money, because sometimes you want glory for glory, you just want to be, and maybe glory is not exactly the best term, but it's, uh, you, you, you want to be, you want recognition, you want people to, to tell you that they, they appreciate the effort that you put into something, right? It, uh, glory doesn't need to be glory, uh, uh, recognition would be part of this. Uh, but sometimes you want the glory because you can convert the glory into money. Right, so it's and then it's it's fuzzy there, and sometimes glory also it's fuzzy with uh, the, the the boundary with uh, with love, because sometimes you just want recognition and it's recognition almost like love in the terms of respect and and you know you, you don't want anything more than respect for what you did, and that's some could be some sort of love which is also a very vague uh, concept here, but I like these three because they at least they they they, they give us uh, an idea we we need to if we want people to be involved we need to make sure that they find reasons to be involved. Uh, and in general, most of the collective intelligence efforts happen in situations where 
we do not we, we do not or we cannot pay if we could pay we would hire people to do it right instead of doing that we want to engage them either because we we make them feel that our intents with the projects are uh, are, are similar to theirs and therefore they may collaborate uh, and, and, and they, people collaborate let's say for love it's not love for, for the other part but love for, for or, or it could be but it could be love for the for, 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 for the intent the objective or they can coordinate activities because they think well you know at the end, we will split again because my intents are different to, to this other organization. But meanwhile, we can go together because uh, we're stronger together. And, 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 and that, that, notice that sometimes it's more pragmatic. Sometimes it's, so, so, sometimes it's more to, to the love side. Sometimes it's sorry, to the money side. Sometimes it's more to the love side. Uh, but again, uh, why people are doing is important. And then, uh, how uh, is uh, the, 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 the thing being done? Uh, you can. Uh, have either collaboration, you can have uh, um, a collection of, 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 uh, of possibilities, and uh, depending on again on, on what <coughs> the answer is for these what, who, why, and how questions, we end up uh, choosing among the the different genes that represent each each of them. Well, uh, it gives here some examples even on on of situations of collective intelligence. For example, it shows the genome of Linux. Uh, and it says, if, if you think of the what, uh, it's basically the creation of new software modules. That, 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 that's, that, that's, that's the what creates. And the what related to a decision, it is, uh, uh, that there's the decision of which modules will be included in the next version of the, of the uh, operational system. So the creation of the modules is done by the crowds. The decision of which modules will be included in the core of the, the, the operational system is done by hierarchy. It's basically Linus Torvalds and his uh, uh, more his close friends, let's say, the people that are more directly involved. Uh, the reasons for the crowd to create love and glory, the, the reasons for, for Linus Torvalds and his most direct, uh, let's say, supporters there is also for love and glory. Uh, there's, no, uh, there's no money involved in the Linux project, right? At least there is no, or money is not the main uh, issue there, right? Uh, and uh, so, so that was the why, and, and, well, and the who was the crowd, or the, and, and, and now the, the how. Maybe I, maybe I should show you this here. And there. Have I missed it? That's before, that's here. Okay. Here at the top. And then the, the, the how is the crowd works on collaboration. Uh, and, uh, and the how here, with respect to this the decision, is hierarchy. Uh, then I think we also have another, he also shows the, the genome for two other uh, companies. Let's have a look at the genome for Wikipedia. This is the genome for Wikipedia and the genome for, I'll try to make this a little larger, and the genome for Threadless. Threadless is the, the company that makes t-shirts. So for Wikipedia, oh sorry. Okay, so for Wikipedia, uh, the, there is a, the, the example, uh, create the collection of Wikipedia articles. So who creates a new article? It's the crowd, and the crowd does that for love or glory. Nobody gets any money for that. And how? Notice that here it's collection. What, what means collection is each, one's, each one writes a different, uh, a different article, okay? Uh, which means that the, the effort itself is very individual, right? A person writes an article. It's not that it's written together. At the the person, uh, of course, it can be edited later and becomes a more collective thing, but at the beginning, it's, it's individual. Then, uh, how does the, the for, for this creation of the, the, the collection, what is the how, how does the decision what, what is the decision that happens there? Uh, there? There may be a decision whether to to delete something that was included there, uh, sometimes because it's either uh, wrong or simply sometimes it's, it's, it's it could be just graffiti. We don't see graffiti on right people just writing rubbish on on Wikipedia simply because the crowd is fast enough to decide that it's wrong and, and take it out, right? People also do, do it for love and glory, 
But the process here, how? Is by voting, right? So several people will there vote, no, this, this doesn't belong here, this doesn't fit, this is not, let's say, this, this, is, this is an advertisement. Sometimes people write things there to advertise a product or something of like this, and, and then when there are a few votes saying this, this is no good, uh, then there's another decision uh, maker here um, that will decide whether, uh, have a final decision on whether to delete or not. Uh, that is the administrator, does that for love or glory, and uh, it's hierarchy because this is not anyone who can delete. People can suggest deleting, but they do not delete directly. Okay? And another example is uh, of, that, uh, of editing an existing Wikipedia article. So there is a creation that is basically the editing that is done by the crowds. They do it for love or glory. Uh, the form which is done is through collaboration. But then there is a, dec a decision uh, if that uh, version, uh, the, the new version is, is to be kept there. That is also taken by the crowds. Uh, and it's by, the claim here is by consensus, right? If nobody, it's basically, yeah, we think it's all right, it keeps there. Well, Wikipedia is a well-known uh, company, so it needed no introduction. Now we have another company here that may be less familiar to you. Or we actually have two, two it's talking about two companies here, uh, Innocentive and Threadless. Innocentive is uh, a platform where companies include their challenges, the problems they have, and specialists around the world, maybe scientists around the world, will compete for, for, for a solution. Okay. And Threadless is a company that makes uh, t-shirts uh, and involves the customers in the creation of the, the graphics, the creation of the, the, the design of the, the, design of, of the, the drawings or that will be silk screens to the t-shirts. Uh, and then uh, it also has other customers involved in selecting the best ideas and so on and so forth. So let's see, in uh, Innocentive, then the creation is, uh, what, what needs to be created is scientific solutions. It's performed by the crowd, but it's not that the crowd, notice it's, the crowd here is different to, to what happens in Wikipedia, because in Wikipedia you collect all different efforts and all of them will be there in part of, of the encyclopedia, unless it's, it's not acceptable for whatever reason. But here, uh, for Innocentive, the crowd provides solutions. It's a crowd of scientists or a crowd of specialists. Uh, they do it for money because they, they, they want to, to, to be paid for their ideas. But it's a contest, a contest in the sense that only the best idea, only the selected idea, will be uh, paid for. So everyone else is giving ideas, not for free, because they're not used, right? They're, uh, ideas that will be wasted because there was one selected idea or, uh, that will win the contest and everyone else in the crowd is risking. Although everyone wants the money, uh, most of them will get nothing and one of them will get possibly a lot more so it's, it has a little bit of a lottery sort of sense, right? You, you think I'll risk my time here, I'll, I'll put some time into convincing this company that my idea is the best, because I can then, uh, uh, they will pay me a lot of money for that. Uh, this also happens a lot with these companies that ask suggestions for a new flavor, for, a, for any uh, food or something, and, and then people start sending their recipes and then the company chooses one of them. Of course, they, they not only want the collective intelligence of the people to improve the, the recipes that they have, but they also want to, to have everyone engaged with the brand. So there's also uh, this co-creation of uh, value. It's not that someone will win the, the contest, but that's not the, 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 sometimes the company is not interested only in who wins, but in the fact that it gets a lot of people involved uh, with, the, with the project. And the decision making here uh, about who will get the rewards is done by the management and its money and, and how it's, it's performed, it's hired. In the case of Threadless, the t-shirt company, we have the creation of the t-shirt designs that is performed by the crowds for money and love. They get a little money and they also get, they also do it because they like the brands and they, it could also be for glory, right? Because sometimes, I don't know exactly in the case of Threadless, but we have a Brazilian equivalent, which was, I think, inspired on Threadless, which is Camiseteria. Uh, when Camiseteria started doing it, it was so selective uh, in, the, in the designs that it, that it, it converted into actual t-shirts, that designers in Brazil would include in their vitae, in their curriculum, I had a design approved by Camiseteria. And, and besides, it was not approved by Camiseteria, it was approved by the, 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 the crowds around Camiseteria. Right? A lot of people selected his design as the best design, so it, it was almost like winning a prize, having a, a t-shirt design selected. Okay? So I believe that, I don't know exactly how it worked for Threadless, but maybe there was money, there was love, enjoying the fact that that company was asking you to be part of the creation team, let's say, but there's possibly also glory here. And uh, context, context because they do not 
use all designs that they receive. The decision, notice that this decision here, uh, which designs are best, is also performed by the crowds. Based on law, they're not getting any money, they're not getting any recognition, uh, but, uh, and, and, and the way it happens is by averaging. See, this is wisdom of crowds here. Uh, the contest is not wisdom of crowds, right? Because wisdom of crowds is I get everyone's opinion and, and with their biases or, or everyone's contribution with their biases and then uh, I get to an average that is free of biases. Uh, when we're simply averaging, uh, this, is, this is wisdom of crowds. Uh, and then uh, the, the final decision uh, which designs to use is, uh, happens uh, uh, based on, on the management of the organization. They do it for money because they're hired by the company and it's a hierarchical decision. Notice that there's a first level of decision, that is, people vote. But let's say that everyone voted that the best design was a Mickey Mouse uh, shirt. And then uh, Fredless goes there to Disney and asks, well, I want the rights to it. And, and Disney says, well, this costs so much. Or they say, no, you can't use it. They will not use it, in, in spite of having been selected by the, the crowds. Right? So, uh, so the idea here of, uh, I find it, a, this paper, uh, this is definitely a paper that you should focus on uh, and think of all the, of course, the, the genes represented here by the, 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 the answers to these questions, what, who, why, and how. Uh, and you will notice that most collective intelligence uh, initiatives are very similar in the sense that they have these genes. And it's just a matter of playing with them, depending on, first, if it's, if it's uh, co, how does that they call it? If it's co-intelligence, there will be situations it's, it's all for all. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot more love and no money. If it's uh, all for one, uh, the, one that, the, the one will have to be paying, right? So there's probably either have, have, uh, going to be a lot of money or some other kind of uh, benefits for the, the users. Motivation is always very important. But uh, this paper is uh, a paper that I, I, I think that it's, it's definitely a must. It's a paper that you have to read uh, several times to have uh, collective intelligence not only uh, in your brain but also in your veins. And so you, you you really start understanding how to, to build this in practice and not just uh, to think uh, about it. All right? I don't know if you have uh, uh, any questions. I don't know if anyone in, uh, wrote anything in the chat. Uh, you know that I, I, can't, I can't read the chat while we are, we are at this part of the class, but if you have any questions, this, now, now it's the time. Otherwise, uh, if you don't want to ask me anything right now, we can uh, go for, for a short break. Maybe it's. 10, 20, um, uh, so let's have a 15-minute break, uh, break until 10.35 or so, and then we'll be back and work on our uh, Moodle forum, uh, and I will, uh, well, we already have some, some room there, I'll just check, but where you can express your ideas about these uh, four papers today, okay?